Today we will see another classical synchronization problem, Dining Philosopher's Problem. Now we know that it is one of the important synchronization problems similar to producer consumer problem. Now we can consider this Dining Philosopher's Problem as a simple representation of several processes and each processes are requesting for resources and we need to allocate the resources for different processes such that deadlock never occurs and none of the processes starve. Now what is exactly the dining philosopher's problem? We can consider five philosophers who spend their lives thinking and eating. That means the philosophers are mainly have two states, thinking state and eating state. So the philosophers in order to eat the philosophers share a circular table surrounded by five chairs and each of the chairs is belonging to each philosopher. And the center of the table there is a bowl of rice which the philosopher can eat and in order to eat the bowl of rice the table is laid with five chinkles, single chopsticks. So we can consider the chopsticks as forks also, so chopsticks or forks. So I will be using the chopsticks name in this theory but in the program actually for functions I have used fork. So both are actually same. Now whenever the philosopher thinks she does not interact with her colleagues. That means the philosopher if she feels hungry from time to time she can actually enter in the hungry state and if she wants to eat she requests two chopsticks that are closest to her. The chopsticks that are between her and her left and right neighbors. That means each philosopher should acquire her left and right neighbor chopsticks in order to eat the bowl of rice. So first the philosopher enters a hungry state. If only the philosopher gets a two forks, she can actually move into the eating state. And the philosopher can pick only one chopstick or fork at a time. So she cannot pick up a chopstick that is already in the hand of a neighbor. So when she tries to grab a chopstick, if it is already in the hand of a neighbor, she needs to wait. And whenever the philosopher gets two chopsticks at the same time, she, she can eat without releasing the chopsticks. And whenever she finishes eating, she can put down both chopsticks and start sinking again. So if any other neighbor of that philosopher is blocked, that can be unblocked by putting down the chopsticks. Now, initially this dining philosopher's problem was solved using a semaphore. So semaphore is an important synchronization tool and is an efficient tool which can be used to solve this classical synchronization problems like producer, consumer, readers, writers, etc. and also dining philosophers problem. So the first solution was that each of the chopstick was represented by a semaphore and the semaphore value was initialized to 1 and if the philosopher wants to uh, uh, grab a chopstick she needs to execute a wait operation on the semaphore. That means semaphore value will be decremented. And whenever she releases her chopsticks, she can execute the signal operation so the semaphore value is incremented so that any other philosopher can actually grab the chopstick. That means its neighbors can grab the chopstick. But if suppose all the five philosophers become hungry at the same time and all are trying to grab her left chopsticks, so all the philosophers can get her left chopstick at that time. But if any of the philosopher tries to grab her right chopstick, she will be delayed forever. That means none of the philosopher can eat. So it will be causing a deadlock. Okay, so the simple solution with the semaphore, semaphore which we have seen now, causes a deadlock. So we need to find another solution. So we can use other synchronization tools like monitors etc to solve dining philosophers problem but we are using semaphore itself now by modifying the solution without causing a deadlock 
so we will see that so we need to implement dining philosophers problem using semaphores without a deadlock so for this new solution we also consider the philosopher have three states that is thinking state hungry state and eating state and also the philosopher needs two chopsticks to eat now what are the semaphores considered here here there are mainly two semaphores first one is mutex mutex is used to lock the operation of setting or checking state that means the mutex value is initialized to one and whenever each philosopher wants to set its in state or check a state that means if she wants to take fork or she wants to test whether her neighbors are not eating or if she wants to put down the fork for all these cases we need to use mutex so that when one philosopher is doing an operation none of the philosophers are allowed to do the same operation or any other operation and next is the main philosopher s of 5 that is an array for i is equal to 0 to n so here we consider n as 5 because 5 philosophers are there now this s of i is semaphore is used to delay herself if she is hungry but is unable to acquire the chopsticks that means she enters from the thinking state to hungry state but whenever she tries to grab the chopsticks if she is unable to acquire the chopsticks since her neighbors are eating she should be delayed so for that we are using the semaphore s of i where i stands for the philosopher number and only if the chopsticks are not acquired the s of i will be blocked that means Whenever we are doing a weight operation on the semaphore, if the semaphore value is less than zero, that process or that philosopher will be blocked. Okay. Now, similar to producer consumer problem, here also we are creating threads for philosophers. So, we require the functions for creating thread and also for joining the thread. That means p thread underscore create and p thread underscore join operations. And also here we are using two semaphores. So for initializing the semaphore values and also for performing weight and signal operations also we require inbuilt functions. Okay, so we will be using all these functions in the program. So next we will see the program. Now here we can see uh, this n is defined as 5 and in order to include the semaphore functions the header file is included as semaphore.h. Now, the thread functions are defined in the header file pthread.h. Now, hash define n5, that means 5 philosophers are there, thinking state 0, hungry state 1, and eating state is defined as 2. Now, we will see the left and right neighbors. If philosopher number is ph underscore num, then the left neighbor is obtained by performing the mode operation ph underscore num plus 4 mode n. That means we are considering the philosophers number starting from 0 that means 0 1 2 3 4 5 philosophers are there so suppose if 0 uh, philosopher is taken then uh, her left neighbor will be 0 plus 4 mode 5 that means 4 mode 5 4 and right is defined as ph underscore num plus 1 mode n so if 0 is ph underscore num 0 plus 1 mode 5 that is 1 mode 5 that is 1 so 4 and 4 is the left neighbor of 0 and 1 is the right neighbor of Zero. So here for the program implementation we consider the philosophers starting from 0 to 4 and uh, the left and right neighbors are defined using these two um, operations, mode operations. Okay. Now mutex is defined as uh, it is of the type mutex and this s of n semaphore is of the type sem underscore d this is a default type which is defined in the header file semaphore.h so sem underscore t mutex then sem underscore t s of n so n is already defined as 5 now there are mainly four functions used in this program so first one is in order to represent a philosopher that is the philosopher is represented as void star philosopher, void star num. Num is the philosopher number. So if we are considering zero philosopher, num will be taking the value zero. Then void take underscore fork. Suppose if the philosopher wants to eat, she feels hungry and she should take the fork and in the take underscore fork function, she will be setting her state to hungry and she needs to test whether her left and right neighbors 
uh, fork is fr are free in order to grab her fork okay so for that we are using a function test test we are actually passing the philosopher number and we will be checking whether her neighbors are eating or not okay so whenever the, uh, the philosopher uh, wants to eat she should call take underscore fork and she will be in hungry state and from hungry state if she wants to move to the eating state she should call this function test and only if the test function is returns true only she can actually take uh, take the fork and she can move on to the eating state and finally when the philosopher finishes eating she can put down the fork by calling put underscore fork function here also the philosopher number is pa are passed as the arguments for all these three functions then state is state of n is defined as uh, int that is state can be these three states thinking hungry or eating that is 0 1 and 2 and the philosopher num of n that is an array and that is defined as 0 1 2 3 4 these values the philosophers are actually 0 1 2 3 4 so next we will see the function explanation now here first we start from the main program so this is the main program and here we are creating threads for each of the uh, philosopher that is 0 to 4 so that is of type ether underscore t and thread underscore id of n that means the thread id is for each of the philosopher 0 to 4 now this mutex values initialize to uh, c1 so here already we have seen this functions all these functions in produce a consumer problem so first one is a semaphore name second is since the semaphore is shared between threads the value will be 0 and third is the initial value for the semaphore that is 1 then for all this philosopher 0 to 4 we need to initialize the semaphore s of i as 0 so the s of i no please note that this semaphore s of i is initialized to 0 and mutex is initialized to 1 okay now this uh, here also the first one is the uh, semaphore name and second is 0 since this is shared between threads and third is the initial value of the semaphore that is actually 0 now for each of the philosopher we will be creating the threads so here you can see we are calling peter underscore create in this loop first one is a thread id second is a thread attributes which is default as null and third is a function which is routine which is called on behalf of the thread created and the last one is the argument which is passed to this routine so this philosopher function is called on behalf of the thread created and from the philosopher function we will be uh, calling the other functions and we can just print the uh, states of this philosophers that is uh, thinking state initially it will be in thinking state so initially whenever the thread is created the philosopher will be in thinking state so that is printed inside the loop and uh, this pithra underscore join should be called for every thread since uh, the thread needs to wait until it, uh, it terminates okay so for that we will be using pithra underscore join see this function is also explained in produce a consumer problem so we will see the functions in detail now the first function is philosopher so whenever this thread is created on behalf of this thread this philosopher function will be called so if philosopher function is called and inside that this num value is the philosopher number that is taken to i and we can put a delay of sleep of one uh, that any value we can give and suppose if the philosopher wants to eat she should actually feel hungry so it, she will be calling the function take underscore fork so this take underscore fork function we need to see the explanation so in take underscore fork here the philosopher number is passed that is here you can see i is passed that is the philosopher number which is taken here and here in order to uh, perform any operation the mutex value already told before the mutex is used to uh, check or set a state so mutex will be decremented so that the mutex value will be zero now so none of the none other philosophers can perform a function and uh, uh, if 
it wants to take for she has to set her state as hungry so inside take underscore for mutex is decremented and the state of that philosopher set as hungry and we can just print the philosopher and this philosopher number is hungry then after that in order to uh, take the spork it, uh, she has already set her state to hungry now she needs to test whether her left and right neighbor forks are free so for that we are calling the test function so test of ph underscore num here also the philosopher number is passed so we move on to the test function now what is done inside the test function the philosopher number is passed here and we check whether state of ph underscore num is equal to hungry that means whether that philosopher is hungry only if she is hungry in hungry state only she needs to eat and state of left not equal to eating left neighbor is not equal to eating and state of right not equal to eating that means left and right neighbors are not eating state if they are in eating state that means the fork is already in the hand so if this condition this three conditions are true only this philosopher can go to eating state so the state of the philosopher will be state to eating state and we can print that this philosopher takes this fork and this fork that is left and right so while printing i we can actually if it is 0 and 1 we can just keep left plus 1 or ph underscore in order to represent the philosopher number as 1 to 5 this you can actually change that is you can actually give the number 0 to 4 itself this plus 1 is uh, not uh, essentially required and you can print that this philosopher state is eating and that philosopher number and after that we can see there is a post operation which is performed on ph underscore num that means this semaphore value was initially 0 now this value becomes 1 ok then we move uh, if this test function is successful we will be moving to the statement after this test again the control comes here and the mutex is incremented so that any other philosopher can do an operation then again we are decrementing the value of ph underscore num that is the philosopher's semaphore is again decreased again it becomes zero okay now this will be more clear when i explain with an example after this now if the philosopher after eating she needs to put fork okay so she can actually after uh, taking this fork she the, the control will be coming here and if she wants to put down the fork after eating she can call put underscore fork now this put underscore fork function again the mutex value the philosopher number is passed and mutex is decremented it becomes zero uh, and then the state will be moved to thinking state because she is putting down the fork and we can print that this philosopher is putting down this fork and this fork and it is in thinking state this, this statement is all these statements are actually optional you can just print the philosopher which is thinking now the other two functions test of left and test of right so here if suppose one philosopher is uh, eating and his left and right neighbors are blocked we can check whether any of her left and right neighbors are blocked so in order to test check whether her left and right neighbors are blocked we can call test of left and test of right and whenever it is calling test of left and test of right the left left means uh, the philosopher's left neighbor will be checked that means if any of the philosophers are blocked if this philosopher is eating that can be unblocked by performing the test operation and again new test is increment so these are the basic functions we will see with an example <coughs> sorry now you consider the philosophers from 0 1 2 3 4 now uh, this philosophers initially you consider p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 all the states are thinking and the semaphore s of y i am just writing the values all the initial values will be 0 
Now, if the situation is like this, first one P2 wants to eat, P2 philosopher wants to eat. So, just go through these functions. We can see if P2 wants to eat, so the P2 thread is coming and in the philosopher function, this num will be taking the value 2. Okay, so here uh, take underscore fork of 2, I will be taking the value of uh, 2 and take underscore fork will be called. So, here it will be moving to take underscore fork and you can see uh, it performs the mutex weight operation. So, mutex will be 0 and state of 2, pH underscore num is 2 that will be changed to hungry state. Okay, next is this 2 needs to check whether her left and right neighbors are free. So, test of 2 is called. So, it will be going to this function and it will be checking state of 2 equal to hungry and what is the left neighbor of 2? We can see the left neighbor of 2 is 1. Okay, that means 2 plus 4 mod 5 that is 6 mod 5 that is 1. So, state of 1 not equal to eating and this right neighbor is 3 that is 2 plus 1 3 mod 5 that is 3 right neighbor is also not equal to eating. So, we can see this P3 and P1 are both in thinking state they are not eating. So, we can change the state of 2 as eating. So, whenever it calls test of 2 the state such these conditions are true. So, the state of 2 can be changed to eating. Okay, so the philosopher is taking this fork and it is changing to eating state. Now, if sem underscore post, that means the philosopher semaphore, here pH underscore num is 2. So, 2 S of 2 semaphore value will be incremented. So, it becomes 1. Okay, so we can see uh, this P2 will be entering into the E state, eating state and I just represented eating state as E, thinking state as T and uh, two state will be uh, as uh, H state, hungry state is H. Okay, so this will be uh, changing the state, to already it is hungry, so the state of pH underscore num2 is actually hungry. So here actually P2 has become hungry that I have not shown here. So that will become hungry and it is changing to eating state and the semaphore value is 1. Okay. So, that is the condition. Now, uh, here you can see this is uh, uh, posted the value that means S of 2 is becomes 1. So, th that case is shown here. So, hope it is clear. So, explain once more P2 wants to eat, P2 will be calling take underscore fork of 2 and mutex will become 0 and changes of P2 to hungry. After that it calls test of 2. So, test of 2 will be checking the state of 2 equal to hungry and uh, state of 1 that is left neighbor not equal to eating and state of 3 not equal to eating. So, this these conditions are true. So, state of 2 can be changed to E and philosopher 2 can eat. So, this uh, philosopher number S of 2 will be changed to semaphore will be changed to 1. So, that is shown here. Now, after eating P2 suppose it returns to take underscore fork. So, P2 returns to take underscore fork then we can see here after testing this P2 will be returning to take underscore for this statement. So, mutex is again incremented. So, it was 0 now it is incremented to 1. Again this weight operation is performed on S of 2 that means again the semaphore value becomes 0. Okay. So, now we, there is no change because when you are decrementing and incrementing there is no problem. And the next case, whenever another philosopher is coming, you can change, see the difference. Okay, so now again this S of 2 becomes 0 and mutex has become 1. So, that is shown here in the second case after eating P2 returns to the mutex is 1, S of 2 equal to 0. So, that is shown here. Now, the P2 has not put down the fork, it has not called put underscore for since it is thread. Any order the philosophers can come. So, before putting down the fork, suppose P3 wants to eat. So, again the P3 will be calling the stake underscore fork of 3. So, here you can see P3 calls stake underscore fork of 3. Now, the mutex value will be 
decremented. Now mu test has already 1, so it becomes 0. And state of 3 will be changed to hungry. Again, it has to test whether the neighbors of philosopher 3 is eating or not. So it calls test of 3. So it will be going to this function, test of 3. Now whenever it checks the state of 3 equal to hungry, that is true, but state of left and state of right, we can see that the state of 3 equal to hungry, but left is state of 2. This 2 state is already eating. It has not changed to thinking state. So it is, it is already eating. So that condition is false and state of 4 not equal to eating. That is true. Since this condition is false, the state of 2 equal to eating, P3 cannot eat. Okay. So this condition is false in the case of P3. So it will be again returning to uh, take take underscore fork. Okay, it will be returning to take underscore fork. Okay, so uh, uh, take underscore fork is the function. Sorry, it will be returning to take underscore. Here it is calling test test function. So test is false. So it returns the statement after test. So here it will be incrementing mutex. Mutex becomes one. But you can see that whenever it uh, performs m underscore weight, you know that this pH underscore num, this value is already zero. Only if this test condition is true, this enters inside this if condition and it is true, only it uh, we can increment the value of S of 3. So here S of 3 was initially zero and this condition was false. So S of 3 is still zero. Now whenever it returns to take underscore fork, this function sem underscore weight will be blocked on the semaphore. Why? Because it is already zero and since it is whenever de um, uh, by decrementing this uh, semaphore value it is still negative. Okay. So it can actually proceed. So S of 3 will be blocked. So P3 philosopher can actually proceed because P2 is eating and this will be blocked on this semaphore. So that is the purpose of using this semaphore S of 5. So I will repeat once more. If P3 wants to eat, P3 will be calling take fork of 3 and mutex is set to 0. Decremented inside take underscore fork. Now state of 3 is hungry and it calls test of 3 to check whether its neighbors are eating or not. So whenever it checks, it can see state of 3 is hungry but state of 2 is left neighbor is eating. So it's not equal to eating that is false. So it is eating and state of 4 not equal to eating. So that if condition in test function is false. So it can actually increment its S of 3. Now it returns to uh, take underscore fork and it increments the mutex value. Uh, mutex is as incremented as 1 but when S of 3 is incremented this P3 will be blocked since value is less than 0. That means it can actually proceed until it is unblocked by some other process. That is some other process should perform a signal operation on S of 3. Then only this P3 can be unblocked. So that we can know that this P3 is unblocked only when P2 put down its fork. Only P3, P3 is blocked since P2 is eating. So P2 has to put down the fork and unblock P3. So here you can see the states P3 is still in hungry state, P2 is still in eating state. And the semaphore values all are 0. Now the next case, suppose P2 finished eating. Now the P2 is calling put underscore fork. So here you can see put underscore fork will be called. So P2 and it performs mutex weight operation. And state of pH underscore num equal to thinking. So again the P, uh, P2 philosopher changed from the eating state to thinking state. So philosopher can actually put down the four. Now, this uh, in order to unblock its neighbors, left and right neighbors, to check whether any of the neighbors are blocked, we can call again test of left and test of right. Okay, so whenever test of left is called, we can see test of left again left neighbor of of left neighbor of 3 is called. So what is the left neighbor of 3? 
we can see the left neighbor of 3 is 1. Okay, so test of 1 is called. So whenever test of 1 is called, what it is checking? Test of 1 means the state of uh, 3 is hungry and state of, uh, here it is passed as, sorry, 1. So state of 1 equal to hungry and state of left not equal to anything and state of right not equal to anything. Again it is checking its left and right. So this condition is false. Okay, so if 1 wants to eat, uh, one as neighbors are not eating, then one can actually eat by test performing this test function. Now here we can see whenever test of right is called test of 3, we can see already 3 is blocked. Okay, so 1 don't want to eat. Suppose this 1 don't want to eat, this condition is true, but one if 1 wants to eat, it can proceed. Now if test of 3 is called, we can see state of 3 equal to hungry and state of 2. 3 is left neighbor is 2. That is now not equal to 18 because 2 has put down the 4. Okay, and state of 4, that is a right neighbor not equal to 18. Okay, so we can see state of 3 can be changed to 18 and S of 3 will be incremented. How? Because here this condition is true for test of 3. So we can see inside this, it will be performing a post operation of S of 3. We know that already S of 3 is blocked on the semaphore and only uh, by uh, in at this time this S of 3 will be incremented to 1. So if S of 3 is blocked, it can be unblocked by incrementing this semaphore value. So here we can see the semaphore S of 3 uh, is incremented to 1. So P3 was blocked before but now P2 is P2 unblocked P3 by incrementing S of 3 to 1 so that P3 can eat. So P3 will be hungry to state to 1 state and this can actually change from hungry state to eating state. Okay. So here I have actually put as hungry but this can actually change from hungry state to eating state. So hope it is clear.